Welcome to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Coming up, why you shouldn't file for divorce at Burger King. Also, the best place to be trapped overnight and more on the Worst of the Riot podcast. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The Worst of the Riot, Radio U. Isaiah, tell me if you think this is statistically significant. That uh, a new study has found that... When restaurants put emojis on their receipts or with the tip suggestions, people tip on average about 10, 11, 12% more than without emojis. I don't know if that's doing much for me, the is emojis. That, is that meaningful? I don't know that I've seen a lot of emojis on tips. You're, you're probably about to because it would increase tips so much, apparently. Not for me. Now, when I'm... When, when I, you see the initial headline, when I was seeing this initial story, I was thinking 10%. So people are going from 20% to 30% no tips way. just because they see the emojis. But no, they tip 10% more, uh, which I guess still isn't exactly clear. What they found that like if you were at a sit-down restaurant, then the average tip without an emoji was 22.86%. And the average tip with an emoji is 25.38%. An 11% increase, 11% more than the 22%. Gotcha. So that it's, it's less of a jump. And so I see that and I'm like, does that even meaningful? But it was across the board, whether you were at a full service restaurant, whether you were getting a food delivery or the, they actually saw the biggest jump for people who did takeout and had an emoji presented to them when they were asked to tip. Yeah. The emoji is not doing anything. I you can know? tell you right now, nobody cares about that darn emoji. No, the the numbers does say otherwise. That's nothing. It did, wouldn't do anything for you. But you think there's somebody out there that's like, oh, there's an emoji. I probably should tip. I don't, I don't think it's conscious. I think they just see it and, the, and I mean, I wonder if it depends on what the emoji is. If it's an angry face, would that make you tip more? Because you're like, oh, they're mad at me because I'm not tipping enough. Or if it's a happy face, it's like, oh, I'm happy. They're happy. Let, let me tip more. I don't know which if there's an optimal emoji to use. If it's a cactus, well, how do, what do you do with that? I don't know. So, but I just think it's a subconscious thing. I don't think it's doing anything. But I will say, if you wanted to do something, what you need to do mm-hmm. is have like the maddest face, the maddest emoji at ten percent, uh-huh. and then like a slightly yes. disgruntled yeah. face at twenty yeah. percent. Uh-huh. Even though twenty percent is like. The typical tipping. Right. Put a slightly disgruntled face there. Yeah, like and then the slanty like, mouth. Yeah, and then like 30%, then you're getting like a thumbs up. Uh-huh. And then like 40%, you're getting like some sort of really happy face. The biggest smile there is. But yeah, you go back down to 10%, and it's the face that has like the little, the cursing in front of it. Yes. Because they're like mad. They're so mad They're so you. angry. Yeah. And 20% is like not satisfied. Yeah. I, I like I like that idea. If we're going to do this, let's let's go all the way with this. So what were they doing? They're just putting an emoji on your receipt like that's stupid. Yeah, they I really think... like they really are p- attributing anything to that. Yeah, I mean, the, do we yes. even read what's on our receipt? Nobody even looks at it. You look at what the price, the total is, and a couple things you got on it. There's a bunch of other stuff no one even looks at. Yeah, no, along it's... with that stupid emoji they put on it's there. It's too much, but do you know what though? Then the emoji would stand out in all that that gobbledygook of of grayness. If you had a bright colored emoji, and what is that doing? Like, wh- who's tipping <laughs> four year olds? <laughs> Like you think a grown man is gonna look at that emoji and be like, "I better give ten more percent." <laughs> That's what happened. I I don't know what to tell you. This is a uh, oh oh. I'm seeing here. It looks like they may have just drawn on the emoji in some cases, like by hand. We've That's, we've all experienced that ta- before. You're talking about when they say thank you and put a smiley face. Yes, apparently that works. It's that simple. I've had people do that. Yeah, and you probably apparently you must have tipped more. Didn't tip more, brother. The the numbers don't lie. If podcast awards were ever a thing, this show wouldn't win any. This is the Worst of the Riot Podcast. The defendant in question, Jesus Lopez. He's 41 years old. A alleged con man. One of the things he's in trouble for right now is posing as a lawyer, a divorce lawyer. In August of last year, he met with a person seeking a divorce lawyer 
at a Burger King. That's not a good place to look. According to police, Jesus Lopez told the person that he was a local, uh, worked at a local law firm and asked this individual seeking a divorce for $500 to initiate divorce proceedings. Later on, he met with the person again at the same Burger King and requested another $2,500 to continue with the divorce. Just And that was, by the way, a day later. He needed $500 to start. One day later, $2,500 more to continue this, to keep this divorce rolling. Uh, then later, at the very end of the month, the Jesus Lopez met with the victim again. This time, Jesus Lopez requested another $2,500 for legal services. And later requested another $800. So in total, he received $6,300 from this individual seeking a divorce. Uh, that person presumably never got those divorce papers filed, at least. <laughs> by this guy. And how did you find Jesus? How do you get your hands on a man like this? This is what I'm questioning. This is what I'm questioning. How did this... This is why I'm wondering, can you really, how much can you really hold Jesus at fault here when some individual seeking a divorce thought, yeah, divorce lawyers would meet me at a Burger King. Sounds, that checks out. And need $500 cash up front. Makes sense. $2,500 on, uh, uh, and, and the person gave $6,300 before they finally realized, oh, this divorce isn't going anywhere. Why am I still married? But I could see it being confusing. Yeah. Yeah, granted, I've never gone through any divorce of any kind, so I don't know. Well, Maybe. if you're only meeting once a day at, at Burger King and you're like, how's it going? He's like, you know what? It's going pretty good. Yeah. We're in talks. Uh-huh. We're going to continue this work. Just keep on giving me money. Yeah. And I'll update you tomorrow on how this is going. But I'll tell you this much. You're going to be divorced pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Just keep that going. Keep that going for several days. It's, it's, it's coming along, the divorce. We will get there. We'll get there one day. But this is not the only incident that Jesus Lopez has uh, been accused of. Apparently, he also posed as a car salesman and requested $1,500 from somebody uh, trying to sell them a Chevy Impala that he had no, no rights to sell. Uh, looks like there's a jail bail incident as well. So Jesus Lopez seems to have quite the track record with the law. Uh, so the you be the judge here seems uh, guilty. It seems guilty, but is there like a, I don't know how it works in, in courts. Is there like an asterisk? Not usually. It's either jail or not jail. <laughs> yeah. do you, do you take what it would e your asterisk be? Do you take it easy on him? Because he uh, obviously, it seems like he had a, a dumb victim. He had three like different if, accounts if, of being a fake something. Yeah. What he you... tried to bail one person set out of jail. Uh-huh. He also was a divorce lawyer. Yeah, fake divorce lawyer. A fake car salesman. He faked being a lawyer twice. Yeah. To two different people who gave him thousands of dollars. <laughs> Seems as if this is a pretty obvious, brother, you're going to jail for a minute. Yeah, I guess. You got to learn. Guilty. Hey, Zeus. Yeah, he needs to be taught a lesson. Maybe he needs to... Stop faking jobs and get a real one. That's what I would say. Become yeah. a car salesman. You seem like you can convince me of a he lot clear, of things. He clear, exactly. He clearly has the tools for it. You he got clear, some talents, brother. He's got the personality. Stop wasting them. <laughs> if podcast awards were ever a thing, this show wouldn't win any. This is the Worst of the Riot Podcast. Yeah, I don't know if you've been following what's going on with the royal family as of late. You seem like you might dabble in in the monarchy. Feels like there's always something going on with them, doesn't it? Always a little bit of drama. There's always something, because there always has to be something, but right now, it uh, it feels a little more chaotic than usual, because people, have, conspiracy theories have been running rampant because uh, Princess Kate Middleton, she's been, or is she a princess, duchess? I don't know how it works. Uh, she's married to Prince William. She, uh, she has been not seen very much as of late. Apparently, she had abdominal surgery. 
uh, but she has gotten into a firestorm and and fueled even more conspiracy theories because on Sunday in the UK, it was Mother's Day, she posted out a photo on Twitter of her with her three kids. And at first glance, if you or I were looking at this photo, we just scrolled by, it'd be like, oh, that's nice, whatever. But people, because it's the royal family, noticed that there were some inconsistency inconsistencies in the photo. And uh, all told, I believe they found 18 different things in the photo that uh, didn't look quite right. Now, she has since come out after being accused of all this and saying, oh, it was just a bad Photoshopping job. I was just a mom who wanted to make the picture look nice. I guess I'm not very good at editing photos. But uh, people aren't exactly buying that the that the Duchess, the Princess of Wales is trying to edit her own photos and allowed to post them on Twitter. Where do you fall in all this? And I, I mean, I'm just throwing you in because you're not no royal family expert, but is she allowed to post her own pictures on Twitter? She can post whatever she wants to post. The question is, is this a real photograph? People are saying that this isn't even a real photo. Yeah. That the kids are all fo- like photoshopped in. Uh-huh. They never took this photo because the rumors swirling right now are that there's possibly troubles in the marriage. Yeah. The, she possibly the hasn't been around the kids. Picture doesn't seem to show uh, a wedding ring, which is questionable for sure. There are also some people are even conspiracizing uh-huh. that she may be having serious health issues. Uh-huh. I've people have even, even thrown out that she could possibly be in a coma. Yeah. That feels pretty extreme. Feels extremely extreme. Yeah. To go to these lengths. But at the same time, I feel like her mistake was posting a clearly Photoshopped photo. Yeah. When you know there's already rumors swirling about you of why you haven't really been in the public eye as of late, mm-hmm. since you are the Princess of Wales. If there are issues going on, it might have been best to just not post the photo, come back in a couple months and say, oh, I was just taking a break from social media. Yeah. I mean, she's, uh, she's, she's been around the royal family and been married. I mean, she has three kids with William. She's been with them for a long time. She knows the deal that everything you ever do is going to be scrutinized, right? So it's surprising to me. It's just... It's just a whole lot of questions swirling because it feels like knowing that, why would you post a picture that was clearly Photoshopped? Uh, and, and, and I do find it hard to believe that she's Photoshopping her own pictures. You're the Princess of Wales, then you, just, you don't have a team for that. You don't have somebody whose job it is to make all your pictures look pretty before you post them out. Uh, it's, uh, it's very questionable. But, I mean, I don't want to uh, run all the way to conspiracy theory, but it's just an odd situation that, uh, that this would be posted out, that somebody wouldn't have, wouldn't have stopped this before it actually reached social media when it comes straight from her account. Yeah, you would think, I mean, it's a pretty obvious Photoshop job. I mean, yeah. you can clearly see there's like, it looks like there's someone else that's supposed to be in the photo. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly there's like a stray hand that's coming out of nowhere. Uh, um, it's an obvious Photoshop job from other pictures, or maybe they Photoshop somebody out. I don't know. Either way, bad on Kate Middleton. Just don't post the photo. Yeah, I can't keep up with those royal, royal family stuff. This, this Just this right here, this is enough for me uh, for now. It is- Radio U's Worst of the Riot podcast. Isaiah, I don't know if you saw this headline in the local news recently, but... Uh, we had, at one of our local targets here, a 12-year-old boy who spent the night and was found there the next morning. Sounds like a fun little night. Maybe. He ran away. Uh, I guess the good news is Less he, fun night. Yeah. Uh, he ran away, and I guess the place he was, he's like, I'm going to Target. Uh, since then, he apparently has been reunited with his parents. So, uh, hopefully, happy ending. Uh, but it did have me thinking, if you were 12 years old... And you were going to spend the night in the store. Which store are you going to? Target's a pretty good pick. Is it? There's a lot of great snacks there. There's, there's Starbucks. There's you buy a, yourself up an espresso. There's also lots of, like, chairs to sit in, some little furniture pieces as well. They have furniture at Target? I think they've got some chairs. They probably Maybe. got they got cribs, I bet. Oh, they for sure got cribs. You I could sleep they, in a crib. They have to have some little couches in there. I'd like to I think. I don't know, yeah. 
Either way. Is that what your first thought is, though, when you're a child anyway? If you're 12 years old, are you thinking, well, I need you a place need a, with good furniture? You need a place with good furniture. <laughs> you need a place where you can get some food. You're going to yeah. stay there the whole night. Uh-huh. And those are the two main things. I mean, what else do you need? Video games. Mm. Target. Do they have video? They got a lot they of TVs. They have video games. Yeah. Do they have, do you have a, can you play them? But you can't play them. Yeah, they're probably locked up. The games are locked up. Um, so what else? What, what would be another good sh- a good spot as a 12-year-old? Walmart. Walmart might be. I like Target better as a store. Walmart might be a better locale because I just feel like they have more selection, more Bigger. variety of stuff. Yeah. Lots more places to hide, too, if you want to save the night. True. And while Target has some good snacks, um, they, a lot of Targets have, obviously, the Starbucks. They also have the Pizza Hut. But Walmart... Walmart, you're talking Andy Ann's. So, in many of the Walmarts that I've been to, anyways. So that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good option as well. In addition to the entire grocery section. Did you ever? Did you ever run away? No. You never ran away. No, I didn't run. You're away. You're telling me that you never like threatened running away? No. I did once. I went, went, You did. Yeah. Did you actually of course go through I did. It? You ran away. I think I was like eight. Uh huh. I lived in the middle of nowhere in the country. That's why I couldn't have run away even if I wanted. It was to. impossible. Yeah. I think I packed a bag. I remember packing a bag. <laughs> you packed a bag. Of course, I was dramatic as you yeah. know, when I'm still dramatic now. Uh-huh. I packed a small backpack. I don't know what I put in it. Probably almost nothing. I made it to like snacks, probably some things. Yeah, funions. I, I made it to like the end of the driveway. I think uh-huh. maybe I, I got onto like my little dead end road that I lived on. Yeah, and that's as far as Did I you got. Use your bike or no, 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 uh-huh. on foot. On foot. On foot, of course. You wouldn't get far on foot. And yet again, I middle. I lived in the middle of the woods. Yeah. It would have been a far trek for me to get to the end of my road. Yeah. My driveway was kind of long. That's what. <laughs> that's why I really couldn't have ever run away if I ever wanted to. Because even if I was on a bike, even if I could drive, I don't know where I'd go. It was so far away from any anything. I wouldn't have been. Able, I wouldn't have found any place to spend the night. What was? I mean, think. What would be the closest place that I could run away to where there's a a business? The closest one I could get mm. to. Maybe like a a Kroger. I could get to Kroger. You could have got to Kroger. I mean, I, I don't How think long I, would that have taken you? Uh, probably four hours. <laughs> <laughs> On foot. I, I, well, I know my dad's, the, the greenhouse that he worked at was the closest thing. So I could have ran away to the greenhouse, which who wants to stay the night there? And, and then my dad would have found He's going to find morning. you. Yeah, when he came to work. If he came to work, he might have been looking for me. That's true. <laughs> yeah, don't run away when you're a child. This is a horrible if any idea. children listening, don't run away. Nobody does it better. The Riot Radio U. To decide whether you love them or leave them. Relationship advice helping you guys work the windy turnpike of love. Oh, one of my favorite turnpikes. And in this one, we have a workaholic involved. Uh-oh. Couldn't be us, Hud. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So this is a man that's a little bit upset with his wife. He is 29 years old. She's also 29. He says, my wife is a workaholic. I don't think there's any other way to phrase it. Not only is she a workaholic, but she cannot keep still. She has to be doing something all the time. At first, she would apologize and say she had a lot going on. It developed to this being the norm. And I started talking to her about it and she say she wouldn't notice working that much and she would apologize but recently she stopped feeling like she should apologize at all and that this is normal also i do note that i work less hours and make more than enough for both of us i make more than double what she makes Mm -hmm. i know her work friends quite well they tell me she is always volunteering for extra work her manager (laughs) once told her That she does not need as many accounts as she has, and she should give some to others. Recently, I broke when my mother was in town, and she kept saying she wanted us all to meet for dinner. Twice did we schedule dinner, and then my wife would work until 8 or 9 p.m., completely missing the dinner. I just feel stuck. We have been married for two years and together for six. I love her dearly, but I cannot deal with coming in second place. Oh, this is tough. How do you, how do you get out of this? How do you work your way out of this one? Love them or leave them. Yeah. What do you do in this situation? This, this is one, tough. I think of all the love them or leave them we've done so far, this is where more people will, will be on the, the love them side. You think so? But I think so. Yeah. But I think, uh, 
because it's less of a moral thing and more of a just priorities thing. But I think that we, we still need some good advice. Like, how do you get her to, to change your ways? To quit this, working so much. Yeah. To come home earlier. Yeah. I mean, 8 or 9 p.m., you're getting home and I'm going to bed. We're not even hanging out. Yeah. Take it on extra work. And the big, the big thing for me, too, he makes, he says he makes enough for both of them. Yeah. And twice as much as she makes. And working less hours. Way less hours. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get some advice for this couple. 8772 Radio U. Let us know your thoughts here on this. Love them or leave them. We'll see what people are saying coming up. Radio U's Worst of the Riot podcast. Love them or leave them. We've got a workaholic situation here in this relationship. Isaiah, give a quick explanation here. Husband is upset with his wife. Wife, they've been together for two years. And he says that she picks up work all the time. She's always staying late. Feels like he is not being prioritized whatsoever. She's constantly volunteering for extra work. He also says that he makes twice as much money as she does and enough to support both of them by himself. He's very upset that she's constantly missing dinners with his family. They have no children together. But is always getting home around 8 or 9 o'clock at night and is very tired. We got some good, uh, some good advice here in from Philip, who said he's been known to be considered a workaholic a time or two in life. And he says that it's the character trait of somebody because they're trying to fill a need. Sometimes the need is appreciation. Sometimes the need is pride. Sometimes the need is just to be needed. He says that this guy should sit down with his wife and have a good talk to figure out what is the root cause of her workaholism. That's pretty good advice. Figure out why, uh, why she's a workaholic. Regina also says, <laughs> isn't this what we're all thinking? That her, it's awesome that her boss wants her to work less, which is that was her boss. Um, she says her husband has to tell her a few times uh, for her and a coworker to dial it back a little bit, or a coworker had to say that as well. Um, a serious conversation is in order to find out if she's avoiding him for some reason. But your uh, marriage should always be more important than your work, according to Regina. That's what I was thinking. Uh, as you laid it out the second time, I started to think, could it be maybe she's not doing all that work? Oh, you're thinking she's just staying at the office just to stay at the office? Or affair. Whoa! Yeah, whoa. I, it's a, I don't want to... I don't want to put, put thoughts in this guy's head because he's already going through enough. But, I mean, how do you know? How do you know she's working? I don't want to raise suspicions, although I just did. But let's just, assuming that it is the workaholism that is the case here, um, I feel like, I, you know, I also always feel like giving ultimatums is a, is a bad tactic. Because you, I mean, if nothing else, you could get the answer that you don't want, that she'd rather work than be married to you. Fine. But, yeah, but I feel like you should at least know that. Like, if she's missing out on family meals and stuff, that's, that's getting out of hand. But I also think, I don't know how this helps solve anything. Maybe she's just one of those people that always likes to be busy. And so she takes on all this work just because she doesn't want to be sitting around at home. And so even though that's with you, because if she's at home, She's not busy. She feels useless. I guess that's still, I don't know how much that adds, but I feel like that is something to take into account. So maybe find ways around home to make her feel busy, make her feel like she's getting stuff done, even if it's not, even if it's with you and not at work. Like some projects, maybe some home projects. Sure, yeah. I think also um, for me in this one, you need to sit her down mm -hmm. and number one, ask her what her end goal is. Are you looking for a promotion? Are you looking for a pay raise? Why are you working these long hours? Mm -hmm. Are you working them just to work them? Because if you're working them just to work them, then that's fine. You can do that, but you're not going to do that with me because I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. Because clearly this guy is not okay with his wife getting home at 9 o'clock. This is clearly a huge issue for him. Yeah. He's 29 years old. They have no children. Mm -hmm. They've been together for six years. They've been married for two. Mm -hmm. I think that you need to sit her down and have a serious conversation. If she's not willing to change... Then are you going to live the rest of your, let's see, you're 29 years old. 
your next 60 years, is this how you want to live it? If it is, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But that's a question you have to ask yourself. Yeah. Is this the way you want to live it if she's not willing to change? Because it's not like she's going to stop working next year or in 10 years mm. or in 20 years. She might retire in 40 years. Right. How long are you willing to live this way? If you're not willing to live this way, that's fine. But you're 29 years old in the prime of your life. You guys are asking serious questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it seems, I mean, if they're, they're married, it feels like, I feel like they got a good shot of working it out. But it, uh, this is, you've got a, an ultimatum is extreme, but the, the choices have to be laid out here. We just cannot keep doing it this way because, uh, not it, like it, 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 in, if it's not selfish, you're going to have to explain to me why is what it feels like to me. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Have you seen this viral video going around on TikTok of a woman who has a pet cat and she claims that the maintenance workers at her apartment that have been doing uh, renovations on her apartment sealed her cat inside the wall. Look at this. I mean, the cat is assuredly trapped in the wall. Uh, she tried calling uh, tried calling the emergency maintenance line. They didn't answer. They so never had, answered, did she, they? No, so she had to call 911, and then she had to dig out the cat like with a, I don't know what kind of tool she's using, but she had to so she has a knife. make a hole in a wall to let the cat out, and uh, obviously very upsetting. Fortunate that the cat was able to escape the wall. What a, what a wild situation. How does that happen? Yeah, like, what were these guys doing? They didn't notice the cat. Maybe, but think about this, though. Mm-hmm. Cats hide. Yeah. They probably didn't know. I, I'm, I'm sure that they didn't know. I'm curious how she figured out. I guess, I mean, it wouldn't be difficult to go to normal feeding time for the cat, and it doesn't show up. Then you would start to wonder. But how did she discover that the cat was in the wall in the first place? Oh, you hear it meowing? You can hear it through you that wall? Hear, I mean, pretty... I'm sure your cat, once it realized it was trapped yeah. in there... Probably started re- reacting. Yeah. However, cats react. Uh huh. Letting out little meows. Mm hmm. Little started screeches. Yow- yowling. Yes. That's kind of what cats do. And uh, then you try to get it. I mean, and it feels as if you get your cat out of there pretty quick. Yeah. And imagine she, calling 911 for that, though. Yeah, I don't. That's a, is there. that is that that's a borderline. What's your emergency? <laughs> My, My cat. cat trapped in the wall. <laughs> oh, what, how to get it, How to get in there? Oh, the, the the maintenance workers. Who do you send for that? Yeah. Do you send firefighters? Do you send the police? <laughs> team. Do you send like, to get the how cat do you out of the wall? Yeah. Do you send, like, your your GA down the hall? Do you send, like, some sort of intern? Mm-hmm. Hey, on this one, you got to go. We can't send the police for this. You got to go down there. Take a hammer with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then how do you safely get the cat out? How does she know? Like, she was sticking a knife in the wall. She knows she wasn't going to poke the cat. Yeah, that's right. She was poking in there blind. I'll tell you the other thing I think about this, and people aren't going to like this, is uh, this shows why dogs are better than cats. Whoa. What? How? This because your dog cats. would never get trapped in a wall. Well, cats are scared. They are, they're hidden. Yeah. They're too timid, and they're too, they're too passive. A dog would never let this happen. A dog would never hide in a wall in the first place, and then a dog would never get trapped in a wall. It would make itself, its presence known very quickly. A sweet little kitten. Yeah. Stuck beyond the wall, and uh-huh. you're, you're shaming her for it. Thanks for watching The Worst of the Riot. Since you made it this far, you might as well like, subscribe, and check out riot.radiou.com for even more, more Riot. riot.